We welcome everyone to Open Network and Edge Summit. And today we're going to talk about your path to edge computing and a Crino open source project under Linux Foundation Edge. Um, so this is Kandan Kadrivel, uh, TSC Chair at Crino, and uh, I'm a director at at t And uh, we also have Tina joining us today from ONG. She's a co-chair for a Crino. Uh, today we're going to cover uh, the accomplishment done by the Crino community. And we also talk about what has been delivered in R3, release three of a Crino, and the further details about the user deployments. So this slide, we will cover about uh, what a Crino community has accomplished so far. And many of you are already aware of a Crino community, but people who have not come across a Crino community will give you a quick introduction about this community. Uh, this, this community started in 2018 under a, a Linux Foundation. And uh, this community is, uh, you know, uh, grown uh, very big uh, within a short time, uh, time period. And this community de delivers uh, open source based edge solutions. And uh, the community has about 30 plus blueprints, which we will talk about that in a minute. What is the blueprints and what the solutions are all about? And the Akrino blueprints are globally deployed uh, across several edge use cases and in the industries. And uh, the blueprints and the solutions, they are all tested in the user labs. And this is very important for any open source community. And especially this community puts a lot of effort in testing the blueprints and ensuring that the quality of the blueprints uh, by testing it. So the community has more than 10 plus uh, user labs and uh, and the one community lab to uh, test all these blueprints. And uh, the blueprints uh, covers a wide areas of uh, use cases that including 5G Mac, uh, AI at edge, uh, cloud gaming at edge, Android and cloud, micro Mac, and these are a couple of key areas, but we will touch base on, you know, like other areas that the community has delivered the blueprints as well. The other key aspect is that ensuring that there is a standard APIs that the community can support. And the community works with a lot of upstream and downstream community to ensure there is a standardization of APIs. Uh, so the community already published uh, a white paper and we are publishing another white paper and there is also work currently going on in terms of developing edge apis which can be supported by the blueprints the other key aspect that community has accomplished is automation of uh, validating the blueprint uh, so when we talk about uh, several software and hardware integration goes into a blueprint uh, it's very important that each layer being tested for a functionality and quality and security and it's also important that the integration of all these components comes together to have a production deployable solution. So that's what this community has focused on. And the community does a lot of outreach even to ensure that uh, the people understand what is required from the edge computing and what this community is delivering. And we will talk about some of those aspects in a few minutes. Uh, so you may have a question, where is uh, Crino fits in uh, in terms of LF uh, Linux Foundation Edge? And the uh, Acrino community uh, delivers end-to-end -end blueprint, meaning that integrating projects within the LF Edge and components, you know, across multiple other open source communities. And uh, this picture, you can actually see that Acrino is actually spread uh, across all this, you know, different varieties of Edge deployments across, you know, different industries. Uh, either it is a, a deployment in a customer location or in a cell tower or in a, in a public building, or it could be a you know, connected car. And right into the you know, centralized data centers that, uh, that can actually go in. Uh, so there is a wide spectrum of uh, blueprints that the community uh, creates and delivers to support the different varieties of use cases. And the other projects in LF Edge, you know, like a focus on either IoT and the specific areas of you know, like Edge uh, itself. And the Crino really brings that together. Uh, to provide a cohesive solution for the user. So who has been involved in Acrino? And uh, this is actually a very simplified slide. You can actually go to the um, Linux Foundation Edge website and where you can actually find all the companies. So there's only listing the premier members that has been participating in Linux Foundation Edge. And the Linux Foundation Edge is an umbrella project in which Acrino is one. 
And uh, Acrino is actually an impact project. So there is a three category mainly within the Linux Foundation Edge. Uh, there are incoming projects. Those are usually called at large. And uh, the, those are stage one project. Then you have a growth project. And the growth project are basically, you know, like uh, they are they are actually developing uh, concepts and stuff. And there are mature projects, Nakarino being one founding project, and it is an impact to stage three. And the Edgex Foundry is another project on the impact stage. Um, so this picture is to actually extend the, the concept that we talked on the previous slide. And uh, this shows actually how many people are uh, contributing to Akrino. And uh, there are 40 plus companies are engaged across the globe uh, in developing different varieties of edge solution like uh, IoT, Telco 5G core, and the universal CP, provider access edge, SD-WAN, and other, other edge solution as well. And uh, we have about a 75% of LF edge premium members has been participating. Uh, so that's that's where, you know, like I was stating about the 40 plus company. So you don't need to be a member to contribute and use the Crino uh, project deliverables that including blueprints and the solutions uh, provided by the community. And uh, you can come and participate uh, as a non-member as well. But being a member would give you a voice within the community and also supports the Linux Foundation goals. Uh, so this slide I want to touch base on before we deep diving into what the R3 blueprints, uh, we just want to quickly touch base on, you know, what the blueprints are about. And this slide articulates it, why we created a blueprint concept within Akrino and why, why this is really working with, with respect to the community. Uh, the major problem that before Akrino was there are a lot of open sources. And you know there are uh, Kubernetes and CNCF and OpenStack. Then you have an operating system. Then there is a hardware, and uh, there are security uh, tools. And then there is operational tools. There are CI/CD tools. There are so many components together, but there is no place where uh, things all come together to provide a solution for the edge computing. And that's where a Krino blueprint comes into the context where. Uh, the blueprint is not just a paperwork. This is uh, this is where you know, like a, a code is get integrated, and uh, it is driven by a use case. And again, this community is very focused on the edge computing use cases. So it is again edge use case based, and uh, it has to provide you the full integration and, and an end to end solution that you can actually take it and deploy in your production or in a lab or in your production trial. So that's the full integration is a key part of the Akrino blueprint. And the other aspect is approved and tested by the community. This is very important because you know you can always have an integration, but if it is not fully tested and if it is not fully proven, then it is very hard to deploy in production. So the community take the code, integrates it, and it takes a lot of uh, uh, you know, upstream software, but also develop software within the community to bring things together. Uh, what we call as a glue code that uh, basically brings everything together. Then community lifecycle support, that's very important because once you deliver the blueprint, you know, there need to be a continued support to the blueprint. And that's where the community comes in. And again, the production quality, that's what this community is thrive for, uh, to really provide solutions that are really uh, available to deploy in production. So what's the benefit of this concept is, you know, low cost for the users, and uh, because it's fully integrated and you can actually deploy this in a large scale and zero touch provisioning that's a key mantra for this blueprints uh, full automation of the blueprint and industry adoption because you want to try out a solution whether you need to know whether the solution is uh, something uh, can be production deployed and you can see who else is actually using in the industry uh, so that's a key part and also the hardware is very important part because you know you can have a software uh, certified on a one specific set of hardware, then it doesn't work on another set of hardware that you don't uh, you really want that to be working on uh, for that particular edge use case. So the community declares everything actually goes into the blueprint that either hardware, software, CI, CD, and other tools as well. So that's the important aspect of the blueprint. So Akrino release three, so the uh, has been released a couple of uh, weeks before in August uh, 12th, 2020. And uh, this is a third release. 
And uh, as I mentioned, uh, there were about 20 blueprints, which I'm going to talk in a minute. And these blueprints provide you a wide spectrum of uh, edge solutions. And uh, the key is it's providing solution for majority of the edge use cases. And that's a cool part of cool part to it is that, you know, if you want to try, for example, connect a car or a Mac, you have a solution already delivered by a Crino. And again, these solutions are all tested, as I mentioned, uh, either in the uh, Crino community lab or in the user lab uh, to provide a very, uh, very stable solution. Uh, this is a one more view of the slide of uh, people contributions that uh, has been received in the Crino release three. And uh, you can see uh, there are wide spectrum of contribution. Uh, some contributions are based on the code that is given uh, or contributed towards uh, bringing multiple open source together or either the code development within the Crino community to deliver this blueprint. Uh, but the other aspect is like documentation because that's very important because most of the open source communities, uh, they create uh, open sources, but they never give you a best uh, document. And that's what this community really best at is really providing you a good document that explains, you know, the installation procedure and troubleshooting and what went inside the integration, specifically the hardware, the software, and how it has been tested in the community. And it also publishes the results of the testing. So that's another cool thing to see, you know, like you know, how, how this community has integrated the whole thing together. So that's the important key aspect of it so that people can see it. Again, this is a, just a sample uh, of what people has contributed. Uh, you can go to lfanalytics.io. This is a beta version for a Crino, but they are working in getting you know, more information incorporated. But even with the beta version, you can see uh, the contribution has been coming into the Crino community. So this is a, one of the key slides that I want to highlight and walk through uh, so that people can understand uh, what blueprints has been delivered. So there are two color-coded blueprints here. Uh, one is the R3 new blueprints, which are color-coded as a blue color. And then there is a green color where those are R1 and R2 blueprint, which got an enhancement or, uh, or life, uh, lifetime support for that particular blueprint. Uh, so you can see that in the green color. So with the spectrum of, uh, you know, micro Mac, which goes into, a, you know, a uh, yeah, very remote edge. And then you have uh, uh, blueprints, which are uh, IEC, Network Cloud and KNI uh, blueprints, which are regional data center or centralized, uh, uh, centralized data center deployment uh, blueprints. And then you have something in the middle uh, blueprints to cover uh, smart factories or buildings or enterprises. And then you also have things that goes into the central offices uh, to support the 5G infrastructure or the application that would be supported with the 5G. For example, there is a cloud gaming, there is an AI at the edge, which provides the security. Then you have an ICN blueprint, which are primarily focused on the infrastructure to, uh, in to support the infrastructure of the telco. So you can see the wide spectrum of the blueprints. The other aspect with respect to those blueprints is that there could be a little bit of variation of the different deployment with the hardware. And we call them as a family where, you know, the different configuration of the same blueprint has been applied for a different varieties of deployment. And this is, uh, this view is more like a family of a blueprints, but within it, you know, you can also see a little bit of variation that allows you to uh, deploy with a different hardware, or it could be a different software version and stuff like that. But again, uh, these uh, blueprints are community tested and the community did uh, a good job in reviewing the testing, ensuring the blueprint is satisfying the use case and it has uh, enough integration points and enough uh, security tools and uh, ensuring that these are production deployable and that's the beauty of this uh, whole whole spectrum of the blueprints is that you can take it and deploy it in your lab or even in the production. So you may be wondering uh, what else the community is trying to do in release four. This is very important to see. There's a lot going on in the community, which uh, uh, quickly Tina would talk about it. But in this slide, uh, I will cover uh, what are the key area that the community is focused on? Again, this is not uh, 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 all, all the work that community is going to focus on, but the key areas that the community would focus on in the release for. 
So the number one is a warrant uh, specification. You may hear about the warrant community that is doing a disruption on the technology for the RAN. And uh, that community is creating a specification and the uh, Crino community is working closely with the warrant community in creating a blueprint and automation to test the blueprint along with the integration points that are mentioned by the ORAN specification. And uh, a Crino community would deliver blueprints for that. And then we have a public cloud edge. This is another key area that community is focused on. Uh, so this is where the public cloud being deployed in telco and the common interfaces are required for the telco to support those public uh, clouds, you know, that including AWS and uh, uh, Google and Microsoft uh, providing a private cloud, which would actually get deployed in the, the telco. And uh, uh, community is working on standard, uh, standardizing the interfaces that are required to support that uh, public cloud. And uh, that work has really uh, been contributed by many uh, key players in the industry. The, the, the last one is the API. I think I talked about the importance of the Edge API. And again, the APIs are all over the place in the industry. And many communities are working on APIs. And we are trying to bring them together. And not only just talk in the white paper, not only just talk on the specification, uh, the community is striving to deliver code that actually can implement this API, because that's very important. And you know, just by specification, just by having uh, specific words about uh, API that doesn't allow us to uh, make use of those API. So the intention here is that the blueprints provide you the edge API, which can be a standard across all the blueprints and also a common framework that can be used across, you know, like a multiple uh, communities together. So there is a good amount of work currently going on with a lot of upstream community that including ORAN, CNCF, and OpenStack, we have been coordinating with them to uh, create this end-to-end um, uh, -end Akraino Edge APIs. And uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to Tina. And uh, Tina, please uh, go ahead and actually uh, take up from here. Hello, everyone. Hi, this is Tina. Uh, I'm the Akraino TSC co-chair, and also I work in ARM as an enterprise architect. So. Uh, Thank you, Kenden. Uh, talking about the most beautiful place of Equino is to uh, ready for deployment. So I'm gonna share some of the deployment examples. You can see from this picture, uh, there is a blueprint under the AI Edge blueprint family named School Education Video Security Monitoring. You see the beautiful faces here. And so with this blueprint, uh, has been deployed in Beijing, Shanghai, Hangzhou, and many other cities in China. Uh, the security of children have been uh, assured. So based on this uh, uh, video security monitoring, deploying the Mac in the data center, and also the surveillance uh, uh, cameras in some of the key areas uh, of uh, the public uh, security. Also, there's a blueprint called uh, iVix, which is for robot taxi, robot bus, and uh, autonomous vehicle, all kinds of uh, like uh, wide parking of, of uh, this uh, deployment. It, it has been deployed in Changsha City, Hunan province, and there are also several cities are in the process of deploying. This is uh, uh, very promising. I know there are many, more than 25 or 30 uh, robot taxi running on Changsha City today, and uh, it gave a lot of convenience to the city, to the community, and help those uh, disabled and uh, people who need such services. And this also uh, reused um, the Mac architecture, also the over the edge open source as uh, IIS in this uh, blueprint. How do I flip? Oh, okay, thank you. All right, uh, the next uh, deployment example um, I would like to mention is the KNI Blueprint family. It's the Kubernetes network infrastructure, uh, sorry, Kubernetes native infrastructure blueprint family. There is a one blueprint called Provider Access Edge. The key message of this picture is that the end user is open air interface. It's ready for the 5G and E-Node B 
deployment today. Uh, of course, it's uh, the uh, SA. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can see um, next. Um, we have all also deployed in Tencent about ours, which is a microservice framework on the connected vehicle blueprint and also the ARVR oriented edge stack. You can see from here above the NIC, we use the center OS and then there's a taskmaster and task node as an agent. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, applications, just like a microservice. CVB, it's the connected vehicle and uh, ARVR for uh, release uh, two and three, we use the virtual classroom student and teacher as a client. And we will have more uh, new applications like uh, Tencent Video and Video within the WeChat uh, and the other uh, video games as, uh, using the ARVR features. So uh, this has been proved like uh, working with the hyperscalers and um, uh, the real world deployment combination with the blueprint helps a lot to build the production and project and profit. Next, please. Uh, this is about a telcos deployment from China Mobile's end user story. Uh, there are two sides. On the left hand side, you can see this is an Android application in Edge Cloud practice. Uh, it successfully released in the Aquino release 3. So case today, there were many uh, video games. They may uh, require a lot of uh, memory and a lot of uh, computing resource. Not everybody has the right form or with a lot of uh, memories to play those uh, very um, advanced uh, games. So with this uh, above the GPU ARM servers, above the kernel, you run the OpenGL, which will uh, deal with the, the graphic uh, uh, very smoothly. In this case, normal users can enjoy the very advanced games just on their phone. It's called like a cloud phones. On the right hand side, this is um, something called uh, OBS DPDK running for the Smartix, which will do the hardware acceleration for the deployment of uh, uh, their storage use cases and also the ARVI use cases. You can see here, you just cheat this uh, application service layer uh, doing the container virtual machine and the bare metal side. And we do the telco call and mobile edge call uh, smoothly insert on top of this OBS DPDK. So um, this is about the uh, China Mobile's end user stories. Okay, uh, what's next in AQNO the second half? We actually only have uh, one queue, um, but we talk about calendar year or physical year. So uh, we will have further collaborations with cross LF edge projects like Eve, Fledge, they have a, a landing blueprint, which is for the IoT workload. We uh, also, there are several blueprints already integrated the Edge X Foundry, and there are more um, like uh, Open Horizon and Baito, Abato and the others. And also we work with downstream, like uh, some uh, certification uh, communities, we work with them. And also the upstream, like the ORAN, CNCF and CNTT, and we work with them very well. We take everything upstream first. If not, uh, they say, okay, Aquino, you can build some feature project, we we'll build feature project within Aquino. Um, there are more new blueprints and enhancement to the existing blueprints. The new blueprints kind of mentioned that we have the uh, public cloud edge interface, the Kubi edge service uh, blueprint and the private LTE 5G, and also the AIoT uh, blueprint, uh, there are many more. And for the enhancement uh, of the existing blueprints, they will add more new applications for validation. Some of them were required for the maturity review. To enhance the functionality and automation of edge workloads, like uh, the cloud native part, we will integrate uh, some uh, service mesh functions like Istio, uh, uh, Network Service Mesh, Envoy, um, those things, uh, which is very popular and used widely. And you may wonder how can you get engaged into Acrino? From here, you go to the Elf Edge website. Under the project, you can find Acrino. More, we have the TSE course Tuesday and Thursday, 7 a.m. 
and we have the Blueprint Projects course, and we have Technical Community course. If you have your new idea, for example, for blockchain or edge computing or for the uh, cloud storage, edge computing, you're all welcome. And there are many mailing lists with the TSC technical discussion and also the blueprint, each blueprint. So we have a blueprint mailing list that you can add a hashtag for each blueprint, like hashtag KNI, hashtag ICN, hashtag IEC, etc. So uh, we are a very friendly and open community. We look forward to working with you and welcome more people joining us. And now uh, we are open for questions.